Duke Virginia games over, geez, eight, ten years now have been amazing, and uh, I think they are because they, you know, they've developed a great program under Tony Bennett. I think we have a great program, and uh, so you have two uh, two programs that believe in what they're doing and have talent and are well prepared. A handoff for Roach. Nope, turned it down. Drove the baseline to put the Blue Devils in front. Allen, they double him up outside. He's going to take it down the lane, in the air, shoves it up, got it at the buzzer! Clark with two, it's Beekman for three. Good! With seven tenths of a second to go. The two of us play. You have two teams that are deserving of winning, and those are the best games. You know, deserving of winning prior to the game and during the game. You know, like every possession seems to be uh, kind of a war. And uh, that was certainly the case up in Charlottesville. Okay, let's get everyone right in here. All right. Okay, we're gonna get like, we're gonna do five man weave and then run, run back, or we're gonna do it after a make or miss. And then I'm gonna run a set, a few of the things that we're, we're gonna run. Again, up and back, get a good run. And after we get the, a good run, then we'll break up for, for individual work. Mm -hmm. Let's go white and blue, though. White and blue, okay? Sure. Let's, run the cor let's run to the corners, okay? Sure All right. Sure. Set them up. Okay, white up on top. Do it to one side, transition, then come back and do it to the other side. Don't just throw them up there. Shoot them. Shoot them. Okay, up on top. Yo, we can put... A guard there, we could put Trav, Wendell, you go right there. The next time down, go to this side, okay? Good, new group, new group. Yo, that'll always be open. Go, right away, boom. So let's go off a mark with the big, and then let's go off the four, okay? What I've always felt is that, uh, and I think, think it's true, everybody wants to win, uh, unless you're nuts. You know, you, you, you wanna win a ball game, you wanna win in whatever you're doing. But uh, not many, not as many people uh, want to prepare to win, and to prepare to win at a level where you win at a high level, and that's a that's a learned talent, uh, because especially in team sport, even as much as you might individually prepare, uh, you have to prepare as a unit. Uh, I feel that that's one of the things with a young team. With basically, we have a new team every year and you have to teach them that. If you have upperclassmen that can help in that regard, that's great. What hurt us this year was that 10-day uh, to two-week stoppage that we had where it condensed the amount of practice time you had, it, it tempered the amount of practice you could have, and then there was no continuity from uh, our games uh, before Christmas. As a result, our preparation for these just to teach it, um, it, it, it was not as good as it normally would be. And so it's taken a while and a, a break in scheduling where you're, you're back to a two-game week helps you. Against Virginia, we actually had two great days of preparation. And we changed a little bit of how we prepared and how we gave the scouting report and uh, what we did on, on the court. And my feeling, when we got to Charlottesville on Tuesday night, uh, we were prepared. Uh, the, and you could see the, the strength that it, uh, it, it, it helped have the team have strength. You, you could see it in their eyes and how they talked. And, and uh, basically what happens in that regard, you own the game before you play it. And therefore, in that, a game that you're well prepared for, it's tougher to give it up. You're going to work even harder because you've invested so much in it. it it's, it's really one of the key things uh, that over the years we've been able to develop with a number of our teams, and uh, I think it's a key thing as far as winning a championship.
What a good one we've got here, guys. One point game, 342 to go. AJ Griffin with a huge three for Duke. Gave a little shot fake, one dribble, and went up for that three. For a Griffin thought about a three, steps to the left, he will fire. Oh, and he reigns it in. How about that out of a timeout? AJ Griffin. Another three for Griffin. An out for Griffin on the right. Big time for A.J. Griffin. Those are huge shots in this game to stretch the lead out. Griffin taking it inside this time. Down to the baseline, put the shoulder into it and got it to go. Off the right side to stretch the lead back to five. Well, A.J., you know, has done a great job for us and he's still very much a developing player. And I thought he tried to assert himself early in, in the Virginia game and nothing went down. And uh, really, even a veteran player could get frustrated or say it's not my night or whatever. But he gets, you know, one he is really good, and then he gets the support of our uh, of our team and and our coaching staff to say, you know, keep shooting. And uh, basically, when he went in the game late, uh, we were able to get a matchup situation where, you know, he scored eight straight points and. Uh, Really, uh, that was a key late in the game. I thought Jeremy Roach's play uh, throughout the game was was uh, the uh, the tipping factor in our favor uh, to win that ball game. It's Jeremy Roach. I'm here with AJ Griffin. AJ started off a little slow in the, in the first half. That's all good. I mean, that's gonna happen sometimes. But when it, when it really counted, uh, you made some huge plays up for us down the stretch. How did you feel out there? I mean, you know, it's you know, I, that's in the past. You know, you can't can't fix it. You know, just keep playing hard. You know, shots gonna fall. You know, I, I had confidence from my teammates, my guy Jerm. You know, over here hitting big shots too. I mean, it was you know, it was fun to watch. You know, I'm proud of him for real. So appreciate you, appreciate you. Jerm, big big threes. You know, and just great plays at the end and the whole game for real. You know, how you feel after you know big shots like that? I'm feeling good. I mean, it's just all the work, just staying consistent with your work, uh, staying confident, and then just, just all these guys have my back and have confidence in me, so I got to just go out there and just trust the work. That's, that's, the, that's the biggest key, trust the work. Duke All Access is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness starts with G. By Continental Tire, proud supporter of Duke Blue Devils basketball. And by Coke Zero Sugar. Best Coke ever? I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're made to move. And now it's time to get things done. You're in the driver's seat, chasing green lights and open roads. And you know those roads like the back of your hand. You're shaped by where you've been, but you're always looking forward with confidence. Continental Tire, for what you do. Heart-stopping moments deserve heartfelt jewelry from Reeves. Our exclusive Love's Path collection features paths of gold merging around a center diamond, symbolic of how two lives join together to find adventure, understanding, and love. Our exclusive Roberta Z collection is a reflection of our founder, Roberta Zimmer, and mirrors the qualities we admire in the women around us. With Reed's exclusive jewelry collections, we have the perfect gift for each moment and milestone. In the Carolinas, true blue means unwavering loyalty and commitment. To earn this level of trust, Ford builds the trucks and SUVs that help keep you in command when you're on the road. And in return, America has shown its loyalty. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Discover what true blue means to you. Now get 0 for 60 plus up to 1500 bonus cash on select 2021 Ford vehicles. Learn more at buyfordnow.com and custom order yours today. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You learn from every game you play. Uh, 
uh, you can, I think you learn more from a loss because you go deeper and there were things in the loss that you, you could have done better uh, most of the time or you could have prepared better. But the main thing to learn from a loss is don't lose. <laughs> yeah, like how it, it's got to hurt. Yeah, it can't, well, you yeah, know, that we'll get them the next time. No, no, no. You know, like, we will get them the next time if we take care of the time we just had. And losing cannot be pleasant. You know, during my entire coaching career, uh, I try to create an environment where losing is not pleasant. And I've had to adapt that to the, you know, the, the culture that these young men come from. You could be a lot harder in that regard er earlier. Now you still need to be hard, but you have to do it in, in a little bit different way. <laughs> Actually, my staff would say we do it in a lot different way. One of the most important losses I've ever had here as a player was uh, when we lost in Maryland uh, my senior year. And it was uh, the ACC regular season title outright. We ended up winning it, but we, we tied. And our team was heartbroken after the game. And it was uh, followed up, you know, about six weeks before we played at Georgetown, we, and we lost. And we learned a lot from that game with what we couldn't do you know, or shouldn't do. We had to play uh, more together on offense. We needed a, we knew we needed each other. We learned that from the Georgetown game. So we played, we, we went through a great stretch, played at Maryland, and we lost a heartbreaker. And we really lost a tough one, you know, missed some shots. I could have played a little better. Uh, and we knew after that game, though, we knew we were there. We knew what it took. And we really felt very confident that we could run the table the rest of the way. And we went on to do that. But I think that game brought us closer together. There's the only loss we had after that Georgetown game and uh, put us in the right mindset to go win an ACC tournament ch championship and go win a national championship. I think about the the Elite Eight game my sophomore year playing against Kentucky. And we were up 18 points twice. This is 1998. We're playing in Tampa. Don't like Tampa. Um, but we – so we lo end up losing that game. And I'm thinking as a sophomore, man, I'm, I'm going to the Final Four. You know, we, we're, we're, we're right there. And so you fast forward a year later, 1999, we're playing against Temple. And we get up. You know, we get a, a nice little size lead. And all I'm thinking about is we got to finish the deal. Got to finish the deal. We may have been up 14, 15 points, but, you know, throughout the it, like teams are good at, and they make runs. And I just remember being like, we lost it against Kentucky. That opportunity is gone. That seized the moment, seized this opportunity, and we finished the deal. And, and we're, we're able to go to the Final Four. Yeah. I think there was two for me. The first one was the – my sophomore year was the Clemson loss at Clemson. We got we got destroyed. And I think that loss it set it, it lit a fire under me because at that time I lost my starting job. I had seven turnovers in that game and we just got humiliated. So I think at that moment for me personally, I knew I had to get better and um, I had to learn a lot. And I and I learned from it. I got better. I didn't put put myself into a hole and never come out of it. I just continued to grind and knew. Okay, I can't do that again. What did I learn? I watched film and I, I, I came back stronger than ever. And then um, the other one was the at Maryland loss in 2010. That loss made us champions. <laughs> that loss made us champions. I remember as a team we said, all right, we're not we're not losing again. <laughs> we're not losing again. It was a tough road win. They stormed the court on us. I think we ended up having to share the ACC with Maryland that year because of that loss, and it just motivated us to go on and do what we did in, in Indianapolis. You know, I don't let losses linger uh, or wins. You know, I think, I don't think you ever win anything by lingering in the past, uh, whether it be with a win or a, or a loss. So once it's done and once we take care of that game, we move on and it's, you know, a game of this year is in the same closet that the game of 40 years ago was in. Yeah, it, it, uh, uh, it's like it happened way, way back. And uh, I've, I've learned, I've learned to do that. And I, I, think it's a, it, I think it's a very good thing to learn. 
I know the car accident wasn't technically your fault. But we, as the insurance company, deny this claim. We might fix your car. But medical bills? Pain and suffering? Lost wages? You're asking for a lot. Oh, you've got a lawyer. This conversation is over. Tell the insurance company you mean business. Call on the Hurt Line, the law offices of James Scott Farron, right now. It's bow time. If the workday's over, but your family's hunger is gearing up for the night shift, drop a big bow box on it. Because with 12 Supremes, biscuits, fixings, and tea, you can clock out and still enjoy a delicious dinner. It's bow time. Heart-stopping moments deserve heartfelt jewelry from Reeves. Our exclusive Love's Path collection features paths of gold merging around a center diamond, symbolic of how two lives join together to find adventure, understanding, and love. Our exclusive Roberta Z collection is a reflection of our founder, Roberta Zimmer, and mirrors the qualities we admire in the women around us. With Reed's exclusive jewelry collections, we have the perfect gift for each moment and milestone. It's bow time. If the workday's over, but your family's hunger is gearing up for the night shift, drop a big bow box on it. Because with 12 Supremes, biscuits, fixings, and tea, you can clock out and still enjoy a delicious dinner. It's bow time. Duke Basketball 360 with Chris Spatola, presented by Continental Tire, proud supporter of Duke Blue Devils basketball. One of the things that I think Coach K and, and the Duke staff have tried to figure out as the season has evolved is what type of production they're going to get off of their bench. Uh, and it was one of the four sites that, that Coach K had coming into the year. Uh, he knew he was going to need guys off of that bench to give them production, especially experienced guys, guys who have played a lot of college basketball. Coach K has not taken many transfers or grad transfers in, in the past. Uh, but he went out into that transfer portal this year, and he got two grad transfers, Theo John and Bates Jones. Theo John coming from Marquette, of course, and Bates Jones coming from Davidson. Both of those guys had been well coached at their previous stops. Theo John, of course, by Steve Wojciechowski, and Bates Jones by Bob McKillop, uh, who's one of the best coaches in this business. Uh, and, you know, having that experience both in the locker room but in games, guys who they know their role, they embrace their role, and they're always ready. You, you never know when those guys are going to get called, but every time they come in the game, for the most part, they have been ready. Let's start with Theo John. His time at Marquette, he was an enforcer, a physical player on the interior, and one of their best rebounders. He was their best rebounder and one of the best rebounders in the Big East. He's played that role at Duke. He comes in. He's a guy who understands defensive concepts, understands how to guard ball screens, and a guy who can be a rugged, rugged enforcer, give them some physicality on the interior. Bates Jones, it's taken a little time. You know, a guy who's, I think, tried to figure out how he can make an impact and how he can play his role. But again, a guy who understands the game of basketball, plays with a high IQ, but can also knock down a perimeter shot. And he's not afraid. If Bates Jones catches it, especially in that corner, and he's open, that dude is putting it up, and he is shooting at a pretty high clip. You know, a guy, again, who's not afraid of the moment and a guy who understands his role. Those guys are going to be critical down the stretch of this season for Duke. You need that experience. You need guys who understand their role and guys who, when they come in, are going to, you know, be easy to play with, guys who are going to allow some of those younger players to do their thing. You, you can't quantify that type of experience, especially on a team that trends younger and especially a team where – their most impactful guys are younger players. Having those two transfers has been huge for Duke this year. Thinking about a three, still thinking about it. Now he wants to drive on the left baseline, nearly fell down, collects himself, finds Bancaro, 10 to shoot. Inside it goes, nice feed to John, takes his time and dunks it down. Last spring, you know, with the you know, transfer portal, uh, you know, a lot of things were happening. And what we tried to do is not go nuts with that. And, 
uh, one, to show commitment to the eight young men that we had coming back and not so-called recruit over them or recruit someone where we show that we're, we don't believe in them. But we told them that we're going to need, you know, big guy backup and some maturity on the team. And so our two grad transfers filled that role. In Theo John, you have someone who started at Marquette and was a three to four year starter, played for Steve Wojciechowski, but he also was a heck of a defensive player. He didn't practice as much because he was injured quite a bit. So when we brought him in, we made sure that our sports medicine people worked with him. And basically he's become a better athlete and has been pretty much injury free. And Bates Jones, you know, he was uh, uh, a, a player that came off the bench for Bob McKillop. Bob is at Davidson is really one of the great coaches of all time. And so we knew uh, Bates' family situation with Duke. He loved Duke, wanted to go to graduate school. And I wasn't looking for another guy to start. I even told him, I said, you may not play, but you can have a huge impact on our team. And uh, he has had an imp that impact. The maturity of both those guys, and they are such good teammates. It's like having a big brother for some of these guys. I think Theo has helped Mark, and Bates has helped Paolo, and uh, and the other guys on, on the team. They've been they've been great additions to our uh, to our squad. Back out for more inside for Williams. A kick out to the left corner for a Jones three. Good. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're made to move. And now it's time to get things done. You're in the driver's seat, chasing green lights and open roads. And you know those roads like the back of your hand. You're shaped by where you've been, but you're always looking forward with confidence. Continental Tire for what you do. In the Carolinas, true blue means unwavering loyalty and commitment. To earn this level of trust, Ford builds the trucks and SUVs that help keep you in command when you're on the road. And in return, America has shown its loyalty. See your Carolina Ford dealer today. Discover what true blue means to you. Now get 0 for 60 plus up to 1500 bonus cash on select 2021 Ford vehicles. Learn more at buyfordnow.com and custom order yours today. It's bow time. If the work day's over, but your family's hunger is gearing up for the night shift, drop a big bow box on it. Because with 12 Supremes, biscuits, fixings, and tea, you can clock out and still enjoy a delicious dinner. It's bow time. Coach K's Legacy Moments. One of the most astonishing finishes in Duke history saw the Blue Doubles bounce back from a 10-point deficit with the minutes of play to win in overtime at Maryland in 2001. It's the most remarkable wow. comeback I have ever seen. At season's end, Duke coupled a miracle minute with another massive rally against the Terps, roaring back from 22 points down in the Final Four on the way to the program's third NCAA crown under Coach K. Well, the 2001 National Championship uh, team was one of the best teams we've had here at Duke. And well, that was a year we had what could have been a catastrophic injury in Carlos Boozer you know, breaking his foot, the uh, Jones fracture, fifth metatarsal, uh, the last home game against Maryland. And, uh, you know, we lost that game, and, and it looked like, well, 
you know, there's not going to be a national championship. And really, we met the next morning, and we said we're going to win the national championship, and this is how we're going to do it. And uh, Casey Sanders and Reggie Love stepped in uh, during that next month. We won the ACC tournament, and uh, we we played faster. And uh, and for some reason, Carlos. Uh, Carlos got better faster, and by the time we got to the Final Four, uh, he was ready to help us, and I can remember at halftime of the national championship game, uh, we go in and we're playing Arizona, a great Arizona team, and I said, uh, Casey, there's nothing against you, but Carlos, are you ready to start the second half? And he said, I am. And uh, you get chills thinking about the, those moments and uh, uh, Jason Williams coming down the court, hadn't hit many shots, and we called a high ball screen, and uh, he looked at me like I'm one for eight or one for nine. I said, no, no, you do it. And he did it, and it went in, and, and uh, Duhon did a heck of a job, and uh, it was Jason's dream to throw the ball up. Duhon had the ball at the end of the game, gave it to Jason, and, you know, and it was one of the great moments uh, for Duke basketball. You know, the Virginia game and how Tony Bennett and the Virginia family, uh, not just their basketball family, but their athletic family, uh, uh, honored me was really a sign of what we should be doing. Not that you honor everybody every game or whatever, and but uh, I thought it was uh, it, it was the right thing to to do. Uh, Tony took it to another level by speaking before the game, and uh, it was a classy thing to do. And you know what? It, it I know it was an honor for me, but I thought it was an honor for our brotherhood. In, uh, in the ACC, you know, I've been here for over four decades. And, you know, before the game, I went over to see Terry Holland, who was at, at the game. And, you know, there's a there's a brotherhood there, not just a brotherhood of Duke basketball, but the brotherhood of everyone who's played in the ACC. And we should honor that. And uh, that's what they did. And I, I thought it was a good old time moment that needs to be brought into the new time uh, where we're, you know, we give credit and uh, to all of the great players and coaches and programs that, uh, that are in our, in our conference. That's how you promote your conference. And so it was a beautiful night and I, I truly appreciate the way uh, Tony and uh, Tony did it.